constraints and labour values. I was asked by a viewer in a question under my lecture on why the labour theory of value is true, is that this is all very well, but how is it affected by environmental constraints? Suppose you want to control the amount of carbon uh, to carbon dioxide that you emit. How does that change labour values? So I'm going to go through a worked example comparing an economy which produces electricity using coal with an, an economy which produces electricity using wind and show how this would affect the value of things in terms of their labour content. I'm starting off with a very simple economy described by an input-output table with the industry's coal, electricity produced by coal, wind electricity, electricity distribution, that is to say distribution of electricity to the final user, whether it comes from wind or coal or a combination of both, production of other means of production, because electricity is a means of production, and production of consumer goods. This is obviously a highly aggregated system and I'm starting off with what's called the A matrix in input-output economics or Marxist economics. And basically this shows how much of each type of unit is used to make one unit of output of that product. So if we go down these columns, F, for F fuel, fossil fuel, coal, coal CE, coal electricity, WE, wind electricity, ED, electricity distribution, etc. Go down these columns, you see that the output in each case is one. So to produce one unit of output of coal, it uses 0 0.07 units of labour, 0 0.05 units of means of production, 0 0.05 units of electrical power, and some coal itself is used in coal production. So assuming they've got some steam engines to pump the coal. Um, <clears throat> you can do the same for every one of these industries. At the moment, I've set up electricity distribution to solely use coal electricity. So to produce one unit of distributed electricity, we use one unit of coal-produced electricity. Or we could use one unit of wind-produced electricity, or we could use any combination of the two. You could, use, you could use the same table to compute the effects of any combination of the two. And if you got an, a technology matrix like this, an A matrix, it's relatively easy to work out the values of individual products from that. And I've had a number of times been asked how you do this with software. I'm just going to illustrate it using Google Spreadsheets because that's probably the easiest way to do it. So here we have the basic spreadsheet I've just shown you. This area here is the basic spreadsheet. Here are the computed values. And in this particular case, we, this is exactly as shown before. How do I compute the values? Well, I create a column here, which is the va uh, sorry, the column here, value per unit. Whatever you initialize those two, you can then go through in this lower table and compute an IO table in value units, whereby we multiply the f fossil fuel used by the value per unit of fossil fuel. The um, fossil fuel used in coal electricity by the value per unit of fossil fuel. So if you look at the formula here, I've got E11, which is the amount of coal used, times K, sorry, dollar K11, which says it's this cell here, the value per unit of coal. Okay, 
you do that for each row. So for electricity distribution here, I multiply by the value of electricity, which is K14, K14 here, the value of electricity per unit. So basically this converts an input-output unit table in technical units to an output table in value units. You then sum all these up and that gives you the value per unit of the input-output table. And you just copy that over to here. You copy it over dynamically by saying that this cell is equal to that cell down there. And the nice thing about Google Spreadsheets is you can set them to iteratively converge on a solution. So whatever va things you'd filled in, whatever it assumed for the initial values there, once you've put in that dependency relationship, it'll converge on the correct solution for their values. So it's just a recursive definition of the value. The value is used to compute the I.O. table in terms of values and the sums of the values per unit give you the values. And the system will converge. Why will it converge? Because the only thing which isn't being multiplied by values is the direct labour input here, which comes across in terms of absolute units of labour. And that acts as the attractor for the whole system and you get the correct answer. So that's an easy way if you want to work out labour values. Now, if we look at the values that are computed, you'll see that coal electricity requires less labour to produce than wind electricity. So moving from fossil fuel will have a real cost in terms of human effort. Now, the figures here are for illustrative purpose only. They're not drawn from a real input-output table. I thought of trying to use data from the real British input-output table, but it doesn't disaggregate the electricity sector into wind electricity and fossil fuel electricity, so I couldn't really do that. So I had to use make-up, made-up figures. But this general point about, at the moment, um, fossil fuel electricity being cheaper is true. Now, if we switch entirely to producing electricity using wind, that's to say we introduce environmental constraints that you're not allowed to burn coal and you have to produce all of it using wind, you can recompute the value of everything. Now, the important thing is when you do that, you can easily do it with the spreadsheet. The value of everything goes up. Why is that? It's because energy is a universal input. Everything requires energy to produce. So if more labour is required to produce energy, then everything rises in value. Or, look at the other way, the cost to society in terms of labour time of producing things goes up. This will also have an effect on the relative values of, of products. So that if, for example, we were to choose electricity as our standard of value and define, the, the say that one unit of electricity costs one pound, then all the prices will have gone up using Sorry, the relative absolute prices have gone up, but the relative prices in terms of electricity will have changed. In general, they'll have gone down. Why is that? It's because electricity ha itself has become more expensive and therefore relative to electricity, everything else gets cheaper. Now, this will have knock-on effects on all sorts of goods, all sorts of goods labour content will vary. The more electricity they, or more in energy intensive they are, the more their labour value will have risen. But the point is that the labour theory of value is defined 
defines value in terms of the socially necessary labour time. And if society decides that fossil fuel burning is no longer allowed, the socially necessary labour time to produce electricity goes up, or is defined, at least, by all those possible techniques which don't use fossil fuels. So the labour theory of value can easily take this into account once a social decision is, is arrived at.